Uh, my name is Buddy Lesavoy. I have the, uh, the great honor and privilege of serving as Mike's uh, friend and <laughs> campaign chairman. Um, I've had uh, a great run with Mike. He's a fantastic guy. You're going to hear all sorts of great things about him. But my primary task uh, this evening is to recognize a number of uh, special guests that are with us tonight. And so um, if you could just wave when you, when you hear your name called, but Representative Bob Friedman was here, and I know he was uh, rushing to get out. Sheriff Ron Ross, Rossi I saw nearby, uh, Allentown Councilman Pete Schweier and Ray O'Connell, uh, Easton Councilman uh, Jeff Warren, Lehigh County Democratic Chair Barb Johnson, and Allentown Managing Director Ken Bennington. Uh, and in addition to those, uh, I am delighted to be able to introduce uh, Representative Jennifer Mann. Uh, Jen has been um, another very longtime friend. Uh, my family all know her and love her. Uh, she has served the, uh, the citizens of Allentown uh, in, in her state representative capacity since 1988 um, and has done just an outstanding job in every respect. Um, Something that, that maybe not too many of you know that, that just blows me away and I think is just so impressive uh, and truly distinguishes Jen is that she is literally one of three women to ever serve in the Democratic uh, Party leadership. Uh, and that is one of three in 330 years. This is the year, the 1682, that the Pennsylvania State Legislature is formed. Uh, and she is only the third, first, third woman to ever serve in that leadership as the caucus secretary. She's done amazing work in that capacity and in every capacity, uh, but most importantly to me personally is that she's been a great friend, a great member of our community, a lifelong resident, graduate of a local university, um, and she's been a businesswoman in our community, and I am truly proud to tell you that at one point in that capacity, I actually had the privilege of representing her. So without any further ado, I introduce Representative Jennifer May. Mike, you might have to fight me for this uh, microphone in a few minutes. I'm not used to surrendering. I have to tell you, I mean, it, it, many of you know, obviously it wasn't uh, an easy decision uh, to decide to, to walk away from a job I have loved and serving my hometown these last uh, 13 plus years. But the good news is, Mike must have come into some money because he had volunteered to fund my retirement. <laughs> uh, so I know he really wants a job because uh, he's paying me a fortune to step down so he can run. Uh, but the reality is, uh, you know, standing here in, in, a, in a place that's so familiar to me as an Allentown kid in West End, a place I've done campaign announcements over the years and at fundraisers and events, uh, it's only fitting for this night to happen here. Uh, and it's only fitting that it happens, uh, in my mind, to me, it, tonight is about passing the torch. I've tried to work uh, very hard in my time in the legislature to do what I can to advance our community and to make the city we all care about in my hometown a better place, to create better opportunities, to improve our schools, to uh, support our law enforcement so we can effectively reduce crime, make Allentown safer, and, uh, and to create economic opportunities for those that are here. And I think we can look around the city and say we are on our way. You know, we don't have to look much further than the 800, uh, 700 block of Hamilton Street to see transformation, not change, folks, but major transformation. But in order for these things to come to fruition, we've, we've got to make sure that strong leadership and strong representation continues. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I, don't, I continue to be concerned and prioritize all the things uh, that motivated me to run back in 1998. But it's time now uh, for new leadership. And that's what we're going to have here in this city, and Mike Schlossberg is a big part of that. Uh, Mike impressed me from the first day he walked through my door and reminded me that that was back in 2004. Um, and Mike was a volunteer in our office as a Muhlenberg College student involved with the College Democrats. He interned with us. He did his uh, community fellowship with us when he was working towards his master's degree at uh, my alma mater, Lehigh University. And very quickly was ready to, to get right in the foray of public service and signed up as a candidate for Allentown City Council in a very short time. 
Mike has distinguished himself. He's not afraid of a fight. He's not afraid to take a chance because he believes that something is the right thing to do. And you know, you don't find that many in people, uh, many times in people, let alone in a, in a young man in his late 20s. Uh, this is somebody of character, of integrity, who's committed, is dedicated, and knows how to work hard. And on top of that, he's very committed to his family. And I think uh, that quality, and you see his family over to my left and your right. Uh, I'm sure Mike will introduce them, but uh, that, that's an all-around solid person. And you can't ask for anything more of, than that in a public servant, in a member of the state legislature. And I can assure you that if, if not for Mike's presence and Mike's commitment and preparedness uh, to serve in this capacity, I wouldn't have felt comfortable stepping down uh, and deciding not to uh, seek re-election. But knowing that Mike's here, that he's competent, capable, and can step right into the job and carry it on and help make that decision uh, possible for me. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, with great pride, very, very great pride in this young man, my dear friend and my future state representative and your future state representative, Mike Schlossberg. <laughs>
from members across the political spectrum. There was a time when Democrats and Republicans could sit down, acknowledge their differences, and find common ground. And that noise pretty much sums it up. There was a time when elected officials were governed by pragmatism, not by ideology. By what was best for their constituents, not what made for the best soundbite. Those days are over. And the result is policies that don't make sense, programs that are not enacted, and the suffering of countless communities. If you need any further proof, just look at Pennsylvania today. In this economic climate, we all know that job creation must be our number one priority. With unemployment at 8.5% in the U.S. and 9% in the Lehigh Valley, we can't focus on anything else before we address this problem. I also think it's only fair that I begin my remarks on jobs by discussing Governor Corbett and the Republican-controlled legislature's jobs plan. In looking at the total lack of, of action by the governor and the legislature on this issue, I can only think of one thing. How dare they? How dare those that claim the mantle of leadership refuse to act on the issue that matters the most to ordinary Pennsylvanians? Hundreds of thousands of Pennsylvania residents are out of work, but the Tea Party leaders who are in charge refuse to lift a finger to help them. We have to change this. So here's what I propose. First, we must rebuild and repair our roads, bridges, and water and sewer systems. Pennsylvania leads the nation in structurally deficient bridges and has over 7,000 miles of roads that are in poor condition. By making these repairs, we can create 50,000 new jobs while working to increase Pennsylvania's business competitiveness. Next, I want to give a tax incentive to those that have been hit the hardest by, by the recession, the long-term unemployed, recent graduates, and veterans. Third. We should enhance our funding to workforce investment boards and to small business development centers. These programs put people back to work and create more businesses, yet each saw their funding cut in the last budget round. Defenders of the governor's non-existent jobs plan will say that these investments will lead to bigger government and higher taxes. Let me say this. Government is about more than a low tax rate. I'm not saying that the solution is higher taxes. It isn't. But government must be about investing in the future not just trying to take in as little revenue as possible. So along those lines, let's talk about education. With last year's budget, our government failed us all. They cut over $900 million from basic education and over $220 million from higher ed. In Allentown, that resulted in an 8 mil tax hike and 117 laid off teachers. In the Parkland School District, that led to program cuts and again, a higher tax bill. This is astounding to me. Those in power actually think that it is fiscally responsible to cut education funding. Let me explain this as simply as I can. If the state cuts education funding on one level, local property taxes will rise to make up that difference. That isn't fiscal responsibility, it's fiscal cowardice. We live in a global marketplace, and our children will compete against workers from Boston to Beijing, from Columbus to Calcutta, from New York to New Delhi. If Pennsylvania's children are to be more competitive in the workforce, we need more funding for education, not less. If I am elected, I will fight to restore those funding cuts and insist that we continue to invest in programs that work, things like smaller class sizes and pre-K classes. Fiscal responsibility also means that we make sure government has enough revenue to operate responsibly. Marcella Shale is a perfect example of this. Governor Corbett has said that he will not support any extraction tax. He said that such a policy is too liberal and will kill jobs. Never mind the fact that 96% of all gas extracted in the United States is subjected to some sort of extraction tax. Never mind that Pennsylvania has some of the richest shale deposits in the entire United States. And never mind the fact that extraction taxes are the norm in such bastions of liberalism like Oklahoma, Wyoming, <laughs> and Texas. An extraction tax will not kill jobs, and that idea is a joke. What it will do is help fund government operations, help local municipalities deal with the aftermath of drilling, and help the Department of Environmental Protection fulfill its basic mission of keeping our water pure and keeping our air breathable. At the end of the day, good government is boring. It requires experienced, 
energetic and creative thinkers, not inflexible ideologues. In my time on City Council, I've passed five pieces of legislation and met multiple budget amendments that have led to better public policy for the people of Allen County. Some laws have gotten more attention than others, like our handheld cell phone ban. Others were more mundane. Every one of these pieces of legislation were written in consultation with multiple parties, after careful research and listening to the concerns of countless constituents. My record shows that I can bring together the private and public sector, listen to Democrats as well as Republicans, talk to my friends in labor and my friends in business, and ultimately take all these opinions into, an, into account in order to make government work again. This brings me to my final point. What the Allentown area needs is someone who believes that the purpose of government is to improve the lives of the people it represents as much as possible. When a resident of the West End travels to the east side of the city, they use roads that are maintained by the government. They're protected from harm by police officers. If they become ill, they're taken to the hospital by publicly funded paramedics. If we try to stand alone, we all fall together. But if we stand as one, if we acknowledge that we are all obligated to protect each other in society, then we can succeed. America is great not only because of its individualism, but because of our shared obligation to each other. Those are my values, those are my beliefs, and that is the core of my being that I will take with me to Harrisburg. When I first ran for office three years ago, I have very distinctly remember concluding my announcement speech by saying, together, let's do something extraordinary. At the time, I asked for your support, your time, and possibly your money, in order to make this campaign work. And so many of you gave so much more than I ever could have hoped. Running for office isn't easy. And serving as an elected official is even harder. I have a nine-month-old son. And if I'm elected, I will probably spend more time away from him than I care to think about. That being said, I am doing this because I think I can do great things for my family and for my community. Some parents lead Boy Scout troops. Others coach Little League teams. It is my hope that I can make up for this missed time by helping to repair a broken economy, enhance an overburdened educational system, and revitalize a city. My friends, with your aid, we can still do something extraordinary. Send me to Harrisburg, and I'll help make government work again. Thank you.